New haircut, new background, new Mission Impossible movie. Must be summer. Here we go. Hey up guys, so today's film up for discussion is Mission Impossible Fallout, which is the sixth film in the uh, Mission Impossible franchise. And like Rogue Nation, the film that came before it, it's written and directed by Christopher McQuarrie, and once again stars Tom Cruise as Ethan Hunt, who is on another impossible mission of sorts, along with some familiar faces. Luther, played by Bing Rames, Benji, played by Simon Pegg, and Isla, played by Rebecca Ferguson. This time around, Ethan and his team are trying to retrieve three plutonium devices, which have gotten into the hands of someone known as John Lark. And that's pretty much all the plot that you need to know. And like any Mission Impossible movie, you can expect plenty of great action set pieces, as well as gorgeous landscape shots, and plenty of Tom Cruise putting himself at harm's way just to get some fucking cool looking shots, okay? By now, most people are already aware that Tom Cruise actually injured himself while shooting this film during a stunt sequence filmed on the rooftops of London. Yeah, he actually ran between two buildings, jumped, and then didn't quite make the landing, and um, yeah, his ankle was bashed in, and I think he broke it. But yeah, that shot of him actually breaking his ankle made it into the final product. And you can see when he claws himself up from the building, you know, he sort of like limps it off and yet yeah, he's not acting there. But yeah, kudos on him for, you know, completing the stunt, you know, before yelling cut. Say what you want about the man, but there's no denying he is so committed to the craft. And he's like 55 years old now as well. So yeah, I've got mad respect for him. He's not showing any signs of turning into a lethal weapon, you know, Murtaugh style character anytime soon. I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> Knowing Tom Cruise, he'll be doing this till he's 80. And apparently Tom Cruise also jumped out of a plane over a hundred times just to get one shot, as well as hung, you know, outside a moving helicopter as well. I think that is part of the X Factor as to what makes the Mission Impossible franchise, that rare exception to franchise fatigue, is that part of the joy of watching the Mission Impossible movies is watching Tom Cruise do all these, you know, death-defying stunts for real. You know, I think that's part of what draws us in is just seeing how far Tom Cruise is willing to push his limits and, you know, just to get awesome shots. I think that's part of the reason why the Mission Impossible movies still don't feel like they've waned or lost the spark. Because we love watching Tom Cruise put himself in these ridiculous situations. And let's face it, the Mission Impossible movies sort of rely on a certain amount of suspension of disbelief because Ethan Hunt is just one of these unkillable characters who can survive car crashes, motorbike crashes, and helicopter crashes down the side of mountains without barely getting a scratch on him, what would kill or paralyze most human beings, he just sort of like shrugs it off, you know, as if he just accidentally bumped into someone with a shopping trolley in Sainsbury's. The man is just unkillable. But that's what's great about the Mission Impossible movies is that they don't take themselves too seriously. They just allow you to be bedazzled by all these practical stunts and really exciting set pieces. Yes, they are a little bit ridiculous and in some cases far-fetched, but there's a joy to watching them being executed because more often than not, they are done using practical effects. Like, there's so many sequences in this where you can tell Tom Cruise shot them for real. Like, he runs across the Blackfriars Bridge in London and he shot all this motorbike chase stuff in the streets of Paris and you can tell it's all real. Like, there's no CGI involved in it at all. And that's what's, you know, incredible about it. I just wish I was Tom Cruise to, who gets to do all these amazing things. Like, say, I ran across the Blackfriars Bridge or, you know, I stood on the top of the, uh, the Tate Modern Tower and I'm just like... <sighs> God, what a life. But that's the thing about this Mission Impossible movie. Even though it's kind of basic in terms of plot, it's still very well executed and it's just a lot of fun to watch because you believe the stakes are real and because you're not being tricked with a lot of CGI or everything, it just feels more palpable, more tangible. It feels more real. It's kind of like when people saw Mad Max Fury Road for the first time, there was so much that was done practically that it's just, you know, mesmerizing to watch. You're just, you know, glued to the screen because everything you're watching feels surreal. As for my criticisms of this film, I would say it does feel a little bit too long. It clocks in at like two and a half hours, this film. And after the action set pieces that are in London, it did feel like the last act was sort of stretched out more than it needed to be. And yeah, I felt myself feeling that it was just longer than it needed to be. So yeah, if they could have cut out 20 minutes or so, this film would have felt a lot better, more concise. Um, I guess my other critique would be that Henry Cavill's character, um, Walker, felt a little bit flat. There were moments where he actually showed promise of some charisma and some good humorous competition between him and Hunt, but yeah, it kind of fizzled out. I'm still waiting for Henry Cavill to wow me. In the end, guys, Mission Impossible Fallout is easily one of the best action movies of late memory probably because it relies heavily on practical stunt work, which I really admire. Most of the characters are very likable. There's also a nice sense of closure given to Michelle Monaghan's character, Julia, you know, who was in Mission Impossible 3 and has just sort of been like, 
mentioned throughout the Mission Impossible franchise, but yeah, never really given much sense of closure. So yeah, this film actually does something to address that, which is nice. And for a six film in a multi-million dollar franchise, it still does feel very fresh comparatively to like other big franchises like, you know, the Transformers movies who just repackage the same stuff just in a different way each time. The Mission Impossible movies always find a way to make each movie individual from the previous one. So let's ask those three questions. Would I watch this again? Definitely. I don't think there's any Mission Impossible movie that isn't rewatchable. But yeah, I would definitely want to go see this again. Would I recommend that you guys go watch this? Yeah, absolutely. It's adrenaline fueled popcorn fun madness. <laughs> yeah, it's just a great summer action film, which I think will please most audiences. So yeah, go give it a watch, guys. And what score am I going to give it? Well, even though the plot is a bit basic and it does feel a bit overly long, I still was very much entertained for the whole of this film. So yeah, I'm going to give Mission Impossible Fallout a score of 7.5 out of 10. And my quick question for you guys today is, which of Tom Cruise's stunts was your favourite? God knows he's done plenty of them. But yeah, what was your favourite Tom Cruise stunt that he's performed all by himself? Whatever you think, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. And if you like the videos, guys, you know, you can hit that subscribe button, you know. Do me a lovely solid favour. And as always, thanks so much for watching, guys. For more things related to movies, TV and popcorn culture, I'm Luke Gearfield, and I'll see you next time.